All right, the direct comparison test is pretty great, but it definitely has some limitations, as you might already foresee. Perhaps its biggest weakness is it requires the two series we are comparing to have an inequality relation between them. That is, we need one of the series to be bigger than the other series. But worse still, we need to make sure the correct series is the bigger one. If we compare a series to a bigger series that is divergent, we learn nothing because we would have essentially shown that our series is less than or equal to infinity. But everything is less than or equal to infinity, so we get no useful information. So we would like to have a test that isn't so picky about how the two series we want to compare relate to one another. Well, spoilers, it turns out there is such a test. It's called the limit comparison test, and it allows us to compare the convergence status of two series without worrying about the relative sizes of the respective terms of either series. The main requirement is that both series need to look sufficiently similar, in a sense I'll define in just a second. The idea, once again, is we take two series with positive terms, one of which we should think of as being complicated and the other simple. We then consider the ratio between the respective terms of the series, so the ratio a sub n over b sub n. We then take the limit of this ratio as n goes to infinity and see what we get. As long as we get something, anything, that is greater than zero but less than infinity, that is, something strictly positive but finite, the limit comparison test tells us that the two original series have to share the same convergence status, either both converge or both diverge. So why does this work? The explanation is actually not that complicated and something I think within your grasp, but it is a little bit involved and I don't want to spend too much time in this video bogged down in those details. So here I'll just give a high level explanation. Let's say the limit of a sub n over b sub n is equal to k, where k is some positive finite number. Think about what this means. It means that if n is very large, then the ratio a sub n over b sub n closely approximates k. And the bigger n is, the better the approximation. Rearranging this slightly, it also means a sub n is approximately equal to k times b sub n, which in turn means the sigma sum of a sub n approximately equals the sigma sum of k times b sub n. Or at least it does if we restrict ourselves to big values of n, whatever that means. Now let's factor out the k from the sigma sum on the right-hand side. Given this equation, what happens if the sum of the b series is infinite? Well, then the right-hand side becomes k times infinity, and since k is strictly positive, meaning it is not equal to zero, k times infinity must also be infinity. Hence, the sum of the a series is also infinite. That is, both the b series and the a series are divergent. On the other hand, if the sum of the b series is finite, then the right-hand side becomes k times something finite. And since k is also finite, the product must be finite, and hence the sum of the a series is also finite. So both the b series and the a series are convergent. Of course, this argument only works as long as we are only considering big values of n, whatever that means. But the conclusion doesn't change if we add back in the small values of n, because there can only be a finite number of terms corresponding to these small values of n. And if you add a finite number of terms to something, you can't make it switch from being finite to infinite, or vice versa.